thank you very much for inviting me to share this uh, very important forum. Now, uh, I am looking at this issue, aside from the geopolitical angles, I rather look at this from the science angle as well. So for this presentation, the first is that um, I'm breaking the presentation into three parts. First is that COVID-19 actually marks the success of science. And then I will go to the WHO origin tracing and what are the challenges ahead? First is this, we must realize that how COVID-19 is important in human history. It's the first event that is driven both by the factor of disease and science and its impact on geopolitics, society and economics. I think everybody fully realize it. Now, in terms of geographic spread, the speed of spread, the social and political impact is the worst pandemic in human history. If you remember, everything started in January, 2020. And now we are going into the 21st month with something that there's no end yet in sight. As of today, there's only one country that was able to control Delta variant. No other country was able to do that. And we are going into October, which is the start of the winter season in the Northern Hemisphere. So if this month we are not able to control COVID, we are going into a season in which the COVID virus is going to thrive, the cold winter. So I think first is that I want to introduce you some scientific background for you to understand why we have to, to talk about this issue. Now, we all know that COVID-19 is a pandemic caused by the SARS-CoV-2 virus. It is a novel virus first identified in January 2020 in China and spread so fast across the world. This virus is the third coronavirus in the 21st century. The first one was the SARS of 2003. The second was the MERS in 2012. And now everybody fully realized coronavirus since has an ability to infect human species. So that is why we have to trace the origin in order to prevent the occurrence of the fourth time that coronavirus will infect us. We already see the degree and extent of suffering of this COVID-19. And if we are not prepared, only God knows what is going to happen in the next 10, 20 years. So why we need origin tracing is we hope to find a way, if possible, to stop the next epidemic of coronavirus. This is very important because we have seen how coronavirus successfully breaking this species barrier the first time in human history. Now, in a way, this coronavirus COVID-19 represents a triumph of science. Now, if you remember that the first species of uh, this virus was sent from Wuhan to Beijing on December 31st. It was officially isolated on January 7. Its genome was announced to the world on January 11, and the test kit was already available on January 20. And WHO published advisory on how to make the test kit around that time. So this is the first time in human history that we have the test kit to tell you what is the virus before the outbreak. Never before is science that fast. The last time a new virus was isolated in the Ebola by the US CDC took them 50 days. This one took us only seven days. Okay, and then of course everybody realized that when the outbreak happened in January, vaccine development started in late February. In December, we already have approved vaccine for emergency use. The last time a vaccine was developed, it took them four years. This time it took us nine months. So in terms of using science, this is a triumph of science. Now, but of course we all realize that we are going into 21st, 22nd month. So it's very sad to say that COVID-19 represents the triumph of science, but on the other hand, it also reflects the sad part of human behaviors. We cannot work together. 
Now, if you look at this uh, COVID-19 fight, we must say that this is an epochal event. We have so many innovation in public health. First, have you ever heard a term called lockdown two years ago? I myself must confess, I never know there's such word. And I'm sure that majority of people share this. We only know lockdown because of COVID-19 pandemics. Have you ever seen a makeshift hospital being built in one week, two weeks, three weeks? We never see those kind of things before. Have you seen that we can test 1 million people in one day in a laboratory because we do pooling? We never see that before. And have you ever seen that the China can trace 100 million people when in the latest round of Nanjing airport outbreak in two weeks time? We never see that. So this time is the time that everybody should realize that we need science. Virus does not understand human language. They have their own biology to follow. So mixing science is the worst way that human behavior manifests and we ourselves are the losers. Now, if you look at how China controlled the latest Delta variant, we must say that the classical approach of testing, isolating, treating to contain infectious disease remain part of the holistic approach in disease control. We were given new meanings. Of course, we all know that the molecular diagnostics, the uh, this, uh, ICT based mass tracing, and all this shows to you that how science should be part of our life increasingly, even in this fight against pandemics. Now, at the beginning, we have five, six percent in Wuhan, and now the mortality is less than one percent. So it is not a total human failure. Our, we have been able to use science to mitigate the pandemic. But on the other hand, if we look back one year, two years from now, we could say that actually we can do much better. And I hope that all the lessons that we learn in the pandemic is not lost after two years, three years when it dies down. Now, if you look at this, you'll find out something very strange. On the left side, we have these daily new cases. You can already see. We have one, two, three, four, four way. So that means to say that the lesson we learned in the first wave, we do not put it into good use. So we experience second, third, fourth. And the same is also on the mortality. We are now going into the fifth wave of mortality. So if you look at this graph, you will say that it's a pity that human seems to learn the lessons very slowly. Now, this is the second part. Let us go to a more detailed uh, look on the WHO origin tracing. Part of this is already uh, explained by Professor Chow, but for those who do not really know the history, so I repeat it again. Now, on, in May 2020, Well Health Assembly, actually Well Health Assembly is the assembly that authorized Well Health Organization to do a certain work. So Well Health Assembly is the supreme bodies behind WHO. In May 2020, Well Health Assembly asked WHO Secretary General to work with OIE. OIE is the organization in the United Nations that, hand, that handle animal disease. And Food and Agriculture Organization to identify zoonotic source of the virus and how is the role of introduction to the human populations, including the possible role of intermediate hosts? The aim, this is very important. What is the purpose of WHO work? Is to prevent the reinfection with the virus in animals and humans and establishment of new zoonotic reservoirs, reduce risk of emergence and transmission of zoonotic diseases. This mandate given by WHA to WHO is very clear. This is not to find fault. This is to identify how are we going to minimize and learn the lessons from the pandemic. So in July 2021, China and WHO agree on the term of reference. Now term of reference is a legal word 
that means to say that what China should do, what WHO should do. This term of reference define the phase approach, the scope of the studies, the main guiding principles of the expect deliverables. This is again very important. WHO and China has an agreement on what to do and what to expect. Now, and then a joint international multidisciplinary team of 17 Chinese experts and 17 international experts worked from January 14 to February 10 for 28 days in the area of epidemiology, animal and environmental molecular epidemiology and bioinformatics. If you look at the area they work, it's very exhaustive. They use the latest scientific tools on hand to do the study. They released a 120 page report with all the sciences inside at the end of March. Okay, so the important takeaway is WHO and China has an agreement to do a phase one study, which makes sense because the first place you see the explosion of pandemic is in Wuhan. So definitely you start with Wuhan. Okay. And the scope of study and the deliverable is very clearly defined. Okay, now, this is the conclusion of the study that it was released in March. First is that it was introduced through an intermediate host followed by zoonotic transmission. Now, for all those our listeners who does not understand zoonotic, that means animal to human, cross the species, transmissions. So it is definitely likely to very high. That is the conclusion of the phase one study. Second is this, is it directly without an intermediate host, directly transmit? Now, everybody realized that we all suspect that in the SARS case, it is bat and then uh, civet cat and then human. Now, that is the likely to very likely. Now, in this direct zoonotic transmission, we mean that from directly from bat to human, which is actually possible to likely. So you can see the differences between bat, intermediate animal, human, and bat, human. Now, of course, we all know that the virus is a very different thing. Virus is not considered a living organism because virus can never multiply unless they go into your cells. So outside of your cells, why don't you just stay as it is, it will not replicate, okay? So if that is in the cold food chain, now China in this uh, Beijing in last May, they found out that, hey, in the fish market, under very low temperatures and high humidities, hey, the virus survived. And there's a potential that touching the meat, whatever, it can infect your body if you ingest it, whatever, okay? But it was assigned a possibility of possible. Now, the most controversial part is that, is it a laboratory incident? It is considered extremely unlikely. So these are the four conclusions in the phase one study in, by the joint WHO and the Chinese scientists. Now, the report actually is quite comprehensive. If you want to spend time to read these 120 pages, in fact, the total is 300 pages with some appendixes. Now, the report contains recommendations for future works, but until today, very little is known for follow-up, okay? Now, what is the meaning of origin studies? The meaning of origin study is that where in the world you yeah, suspect the first case is happening, you go to investigate. Because one of the purpose of this scientific study is to cut the chain. So it's very important that you go to any source that might indicate existence before the Wuhan outbreak, okay? Now, another thing is that in a scientific study, since the phase one expert panel already give you four categories, extremely likely, possible, but unlikely, possible but unlikely, and extremely unlikely. So normally in a scientific study, 
you always follow from the likelihood to begin your phase two work. You never go the other way around. Start with the extremely unlikely event. I think this is already intuitively very clear. And also at the same time, if you think that all of the four, the expert panel make a mistake, then what you should do is that you simultaneously conduct phase two study in all the four possibilities. You never very rarely going from the bottom up without any justifications. So this point, I hope is very clear to all the audience. That is why I think the Chinese scientists cannot understand what is the reason that, how come the least possible things you said is the most, you start it first without giving any explanations. Now, so this argument erupted over the secretariat's request to return to Wuhan laboratory to study laboratory lead, rather than moving to phase three global study based on phase one study recommendations. So I personally feel this, this argument violates the terms that WTHO and China agree in the term of reference. Now, I really personally feel that the Chinese scientist, Professor Liang Wenlian, is probably the most scientifically sound to me. His recommendation is that next phase should be carried out in multiple countries and regions that register early positive samples or cases. I think everybody realized that the Italian blood sample indicate antibody presence against COVID-19 virus. Okay, in fact, WHO has authorized a Dutch university to recheck the blood samples, but there is no definitive conclusions. And again, of course, there were report even in the US that as early as November, December, there were already antibody reaction in some blood samples among these flu patients. Because you must remember, Flu and COVID are both infectious respiratory diseases. There's a very high possibility that it was misdiagnosed as flu at the early stage. But in any cases, origin tracing means you go back to any possibility of first case first. Good. Now, let me share with you what is the cases in the US because everybody realized that the US now is going to another new phase. Okay, and despite vaccinations, the mortality is creeping up. So what I'm trying to say is this, discovering more about COVID-19 is actually very good for everybody. Even the science power of US, they have a hard time understanding this new biology of this new virus. And there are so many things that we do not know. It is very important that we understand more. There are so many surprises on the biology of the vaccine. Now, if you look at this, a very interesting thing is China is the only country that never experienced a second wave, both in terms of infection and mortality. So China must done a lot of things right. It is very sad because of politics, the Chinese experience was not really being studied carefully by all the other countries. It is a pity to me personally. Because if you look at the COVID cycles, we all know that COVID-19 has a 14 day cycles. In both last year at Wuhan and this year at Nanjing, China was able to clear the virus, even the Delta one in two cycles, 14 to 28 days. They must done something very correct. Now, of course, we all know that Chile was put as a case that the Chinese vaccine failed. But if you look at the latest figures, I think all the WHO recommended vaccine do work. Chile did not fail. Now, of course, when we look at what Delta variant has caused, 
You must look at the Israel cases. It is known Israel is one of the highest vaccination rate. And indeed, if you look at April to June, Israel cases almost become zero in terms of new infection and mortality. But if you look at the Delta variant, when it invade Israel, Israel has the fourth wave or the third wave as you turn and the mortality creeps up. Now, why I show this is that, let us remember virus has no passport. Virus does not know national borders. Virus does not understand human language. They have their own biology. Let the scientists talk and let the scientists work together. It is my only appeal to all my friends who is listening to this webinar. So the challenges ahead is that the WHO origin tracing is stuck in limbo. Right now, there's no serious discussion on the best global practices. Every country works its own way. And we have already seen that it is good that this week, the cases did not go up the same as last week but we remain stuck in 600,000 daily infection and 10,000 daily mortalities. As human being, I think we can do better. Now, vaccine divide is a serious issue. Everybody know that, okay? Now, if this rich country is going to go into the third shot, which whose efficacy is only to be known by the end of this month, then WHO yesterday already tell you the COVAX target this year has scaled back from 1.9 billion doses distribution to 1.4 billion distributions. You must remember, even developed countries through vaccination is able to help. But if you look at how Delta variant emerge, if you allow the developing countries to have rampant infections ongoing and mutations ongoing, one day, we might have another Delta plus 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 variant coming out and make all the developed countries also suffering from a other wave of infections. Let us work together. Uh, there are so many things we must realize that a lot of areas in medicine are not cast in stone. If you look at what happened to our understanding of vaccine, to our understanding of the so-called evidence-based medicine, to understand your strategic testing, containment eradication argument, and herd immunity. Human being is, is still very, very ignorant in face of the universe. Now, I must say that all the WHO approved vaccine has shown good efficacies in mitigating severe clinical cases, but they are not doing a very good job in preventing infections. There's a need for more effective vaccines. When the Northern Hemisphere goes- Professor Chen, can you also wrap up please? Yes. Okay, <laughs> sorry, this is my last, uh, yeah. So let us work together. Uh, and the last slide I have is that, uh, if there's anyone who wants to know more about the heart science behind, this is the website published in a very reputable journal science and everyone can look at it. Thank you very much for, for bearing with me my overtime. Thank you.